Hey everyone, Diogo Marquez here, your friend in sales. Today I want to share with you the main motivators for someone to take action on something. And this is something that I came across when I was selling door to door, because when you're doing things, essentially you, you start having this need to write things down in order like to kind of organize your thoughts. And I kept encountering these on, on a regular basis. And I think there's a big disconnect between theory when you, when you essentially start reading psychology and trying to understand a little bit more about the person that you are like having a conversation so that you can be more um, effective in your communication. You'll find that there's a big disconnect in between theory and practice. I'm not uh, kind of uh, getting all, all jumping on like uh, pre-existing theories. It's not about that. It's just sometimes when you confront these, you start seeing that there are some things that are very impractical. And there are some things you start seeing that become clearer. So this is what I started seeing when I was dealing with people. Well, I still see it because I, I keep doing this. I, I was mentioning when I was doing door to door, whereas this is more, because um, like face to face, see what I mean? It's like, because when you're having a conversation, there's essentially a big disconnect when you are seeing the person. When you are seeing them, it, some things become more obvious. This is what I mean by using the past tense and now the present. So what I use is this acronym called Killer MSV. And what this uh, kind of huge word means is knowledge, importance, love, respect, redemption, meaning, money, safety, and biological. These are the main key aspects of each one of us. And when you trigger one of these or a couple of these in the positive way, you get a positive response and the other way around. So let's start from the beginning. K comes from knowledge. Knowledge is essentially what we are talking about here is kind of the degree of importance that people um, give to each one of these. And a good example was this lawyer that I met. She was this really smart lady and you could tell she was struggling financially, but she was very oriented to knowledge. So in her uh, pyramid of things, in her like, um, kind of perspective on life, she needed to know everything about that specific topic that she was a master. She was uh, working on her PhD uh, the, the first time that I met her. And she was struggling financially. And she, she told me, I actually didn't ask about any of this, but she kind of, in the, the conversation started to, to develop in that way. Essentially, she was turning down work because she was doing a PhD thesis. So in her mind, it was more important to know than getting money. So she was struggling. And you might look at this like, uh, seems like a bit odd, but it happens. And I kept seeing this on a, no, on a consistent basis. Sometimes, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I, I, I suffer from this as well. Because like, you disconnect from the world and just want to um, just kind of get into this uh, convoluted space where you just want to learn, that's it. And this is impractical, and this is a way of procrastinating because you're not dealing with life. You just, I want to learn, I want to learn, I want to learn. So anything money related and going out and meeting people and all that, it's just not that important, but it is. And what happens is, uh, this is what I mean by the disconnect, is that if your thoughts are disconnected from the needs of the marketplace, you'll suffer financially, you'll suffer socially, because people are not going out with you because you're studying for, for a test. And a good example of this is economic courses. People that go to Harvard, people that go to Yale, people that go to those big Ivy League schools, it's not about economics. It's about networking with the highest tier people. Because most people that came out of those schools, they are presidents, they are hedge fund managers, they are in front of very large lobbying groups. So it will be, pretty much like next to near impossible for you to create relationships with these people 30 years after you completed your master's or your PhD because they started developing relationships as colleagues, right? Then they went through college and nights out and slept on like, a, you crash on my couch, that type of stuff, right? 
And 30 years after, they are he heads of state, right? So they know each other. They have this uh, bond that they created when they were in college. And economies are made of businesses. Businesses are made of people. We are in a people business. And especially in life insurance and financial sector, essentially, it's like this is a relationship business. So if you are trying to get ahead just because you're trying to learn everything about a product, disconnecting yourself from people, you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer because you are losing precious time to developing relationships with critical people that can help you move forward. Because think about it, now they're heads of state. So if there are some, let's say, a big, uh, some sort of a big uh, work that involves life insurance, they will kind of open doors for you, right? Because they have the companies there, they have the needs, they can write the contracts and, and all that, see what I mean? So it's, it's very unlikely that you are going to fit in 30 years after because they have standing relationships through the past. So be careful with this one because this, this is really important. So knowledge is critical and you'll find that these people, obviously since they are knowledge oriented, this means that you appeal to them when you are talking about the product knowledge because that's the way that they perceive the world so when you are talking with someone when you're probing them to see which one of these uh, main key factors is appealing to them when you start seeing that this is a knowledge person oriented so start probing on that a little bit more and you start seeing that they will start asking you more questions and the more you answer like in a logical way like you would be answering to yourself you start seeing those people kind of bond to you better because they see you as one of them the the other one is importance and what i mean by importance is and you see that a lot of instagrams and all that it's a little bit ego driven people have this need of becoming important and you see this on linkedin especially everyone's a director everyone's a ceo everyone's a founder everyone's a boss right everyone is important and you sometimes see something like uh, pretty peculiar which is people talking about themselves in the third person right and they and you see like um newspaper uh, cut cutouts and all that saying that the person of the year or a Forbes 30 under 130, uh, 30 under 30, stuff like that, right? So it's important. So you will know that when you start speaking with these people, you have to appeal to their self, um, their self image state, meaning like to kind of boost their uh, importance level they will feel superior to everyone else because they have this enormous life insurance policy, right? Because they are special, right? So is people that are ego-driven, they are the star. And the negative part of this, when you are doing the sale, is that you have to talk with them in a way that they don't start seeing you as superior to them. So it's not like that you are inferior to them, they will spot that and start mistreating you, but, uh, Take caution not to put yourself out there in a way that you perceive to be uh, better than them. So it's just, you're just talking. It's just a peer. And you will disagree with them very often and they will respect that. Sometimes they ask you something and say, I don't agree, that doesn't work. And I tried that and all my employees, see, see the, the, the thing here? Because they have employees as well. So they, they talk about their employees in the same way, right? So it, it's important for you to realize when you are dealing with someone that has this need of becoming important. And if that's the, the type of person that you're dealing with, this is the big caveat. They are um, coming from an insecure place so they need to become important and a way for them to become important you boost their ego but on the other hand you cut a bit because you are important as well you have your own employees right if they have 1000 employees you have 1000 employees then have 1001 you don't have 999 it's just same number see they will respect you because you are not agreeing with them people that keep agreeing with the other people they they are yes sayers so it's not like you are naysayer but you are disconnecting with them a bit and you are showing that you are independent Right, they say something and you say I don't agree, but you keep your uh, conversation on a kind of um, kind of a steady state, right? This is what I mean by uh, importance. The next one is love, and love is something I'll be honest with you, not to get on a TUI or anything, but I didn't get much of that when I was uh, growing, growing when I was uh, brought up because my father and my mother was brought up in a very dysfunctional home. So I, I'll be honest with you, what happens to me is that um, 
if my daughter, my daughter is four now, she sometimes she gives me like this enormous hug, right? And it affects me because I don't know how to deal with that. I'm not used to having uh, people uh, showing signs of affection. So it's so it's I wouldn't say it's discomforting, but it's um, I'm not used to it. But uh, I like it a lot. It it's, uh, does something to me. I don't know what it is, but it just does something to me. So you'll find that when you are having a conversation with someone, and they start showing you signs of the it's I don't mean like love like sexually or anything. It's just like uh, that bond that sometimes people create and say I, I like this guy. So, you know what I mean? That kind of pals buddies. That this is what I mean by love. So when you have people that kind of they like you, right? And they show they show you signs that they like you. It can be your your girlfriend or your kind of your friends just play you PlayStation or something or is a game. So it's just. There are people in your life, they like you, they love you, they, they like, there's mutual respect, you like being around them, that's important. Because you feel a disconnect from the world when you stop having that in your life. And I'll be honest with you, I'm more on the lone wolf side, I tend to be alone. And when I find that I'm dealing with people that are kind of my peers or even kind of on a higher tier level, I like that time because I, I feel better, so I miss it. So when you are dealing with people and you see that they are more oriented to like their social environment, I have a, a colleague that is like that. Uh, he has like a couple of companies and his main thing is the love, is a social connection. He wants to know that everyone around him is okay. So he, he has like all sorts of fringe benefits for every, every one of his colleagues and employees and all that. So, and he talks to me in a way to like, how can we do this in a way that they, they are uh, best well provided? So he's oriented to this love connection thing. This is really important. The other one is redemption. And you see that a lot in gospel masses and all that. It's about uh, the Lord forgive me, I want redemption because something that I did in the past or something that I did that I'm not feeling well regarding what I did. So redemption is about um, being saved from something that you did or from a situation that you are that you want to improve. So when you perceive your, when people perceive yourself as a figure of authority and see that you are the one with the answers, you are the one that can help them like, stand up and get to where they want to go, there's this redemption side that is really important because they want to, on one hand is about knowledge, right? So you are showing them a way. But on the other hand, is about helping them get out of their uh, circumstances. So it's about redemption. And you'll find that this is so powerful that look at it like Christianity and like the religious aspect of human lives. It's pretty much present all over the world, right? People have like gone berserk on like b getting completely delusional and like uh, being completely like over the top regarding religion. And the reason for it is because it's this human intrinsic need that we have in regards to redemption, in regards to the, the savior, the one that can take us away from pain, right? The one that can take us away from the situation that we actually, we are the ones that created it, right? So it's about Lord save me, it's about God save me, it's about it's going, God's gonna help us uh, get through this, right? All these types of conversations are all um, essentially assessing the situation that we are right now and finding like it's a way to f for you to find a way of getting out of it and the way for you to do that is by this higher entity that will provide you this redemption so that you can start moving on the other one so which is knowledge importance love redemption and the other one is uh, money obviously money has this importance because without money you can't eat right you can't pay your house and, and all that so when you are appealing uh, to people's need to get money, right, it works, right? So this is why you see pe people in the financial sector talking about stock returns and all that, this instant gratification about, uh, I'll give you money, right? And when people start uh, seeing you as a figure of authority, they see the, the institution, they see the product as a good fit for them to make money, right? They, they, they will kind of open up. And they will do that because of intrinsic need of making money. This is why you see all those fake gurus out there 
they know this very well and they appeal for the jet the 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 nice car the nice clothes the nice watches and all, all that appealing to money right you see them as like you right but they, they made it right so you start following these people because they can tell you see knowledge how to do it so that you can do it for yourself and then you become important right you have money you have this redemption and you perceive that in your life you will have love because you have all this abundance around you right so this is really important um, the other one so let's say knowledge importance love redemption money meaning meaning is another one it's closely related to um, it's closely related to importance but it's about the activities that you perform so what I mean is you hear a lot sometimes people saying um, their life has to have some meaning right and you'll find that if you start being if you stop being egocentrical if you start focusing on how is it that you can do something that people buy forget it it's about, not about value it's about giving people what they want let's say you have a, a coffee shop and you have like 10 coffee shops right so every day people take breakfast there you get paid see what I mean so your life has meaning because you are providing that type of value uh, to people so there are people that they need their life to mean something this is why if you have a channel that has like two subscribers and you have one that has 20 million subscribers see when you look at it it's you feel better because you have more people there and the other side of it is that you don't have anyone there so so you there's this connect between what you want to provide to the pe to people because you want to help right and then people are not paying attention so you have a marketing problem so this is about meaning this is really important the other one is so it's knowledge important love uh, respect oh I actually forgot about this one and this is important uh, when we were with the R's it's about respect and respect is about think about it, it's pretty easy to understand if you address someone with respect right how would they feel right if you would be disrespectful to someone how would they feel right so no one wants to feel disrespected right so when you are talking to someone and you come come off as a as a very respectful individual very articulate very kind of you, you show them uh, like a, you have this conversation in a way that flows well people people like that people feel better so even if you don't know him it's like a telemarketing call right people say he is being respectful and this is appealing to their self-preservation so because you're being respectful to all the, uh, to, to those people so this is really important so when you're making telemarketing calls when you're like doing door-to-door -door or sending the test or text or anything like that be, be mindful of the copywriting be mindful of the words that you're using the way that you are talking to those people because the more you appeal to being respectful to people they will open up a bit because they'll see there's no risk here of this person being disrespectful as long as we keep this conversation in this type of standard unless it is a dysfunctional motherfucker but usually most people will find that this person is being very respectful and you'll find that even if they say no to the product they will be respect respectful also in the end when they are um, uh, saying goodbye and they say have a nice week sir so they will talk like that because th they have this need to retribute because you have been so respectful to to their essentially to their uh, existence when you are talking to them so let's jump to the last one because I actually forget about this one and this is important so uh, meaning money obviously and then it's the last one it's safety and biological and these come come together safety is obviously uh, let's say someone like on the street g gets on a fight right most people will get out of it right because it's about safety if someone's like uh, with a is easy like has a shotgun or something like that on the street right so it's safety people want to get away from it so we have this need of preservation and when you address someone and you show them a way of being um, or either providing safety to their peers or uh, they they themselves become um, in a this, uh, safer environment let's say you give them a job or something like that you're providing safety right there's a safety net right when you let's say you are, you are uh, an investor and you invest in their company right you provide them money so this is a this is a lifeline right you're providing safety so you are appealing to their to their need of um, being in a place that they are safe right all of us essentially we're trying to to subsist we're trying to survive we're trying to become sustainable and if the thing is not working you, you're not safe yet so when you do find a place that you are safer 
there's this um, need essentially to like I don't mean to fo mean about like folding, but it's like I'll give an example. I'd say you send a bunch of resumes or presentations if it's a company, right, small company, and then you have this enormous company that is paying let's say 10 million a year in premiums, like, and you're gonna get 10% commission, right? And they invite you to work with them, right? And let's say you get paid 50% commission, right? They just provided you safety. They just made you wealthy. Why? Because you are, you proved yourself as a person that they can rely on. They like the, the presentation that you made when you are, w they probably talk with you and they, they show that they have this need of knowledge. See what I mean? It doesn't matter if it's a large company or if it's a small company. It just means they have different resources. There's this disproportional amount of resources that one has that the other doesn't. These, in the particular, they had 10 million in premiums and they needed like this life insurance person that could take care of all that stuff because they, they didn't understand it, right? They need an expert there, right? So this is about the safety thing. So I'll, I'll give an example. There was uh, several times in my life there was very like um, a risk and they, I had this entrepreneur, this older entrepreneur and I say, I will loan you 50,000, 15,000 and you spend here a couple of months and you just learn about the ropes and then you'll be on your way. How's that sound? Right? It was just much, much older. And he told me, he's just, just like me, he's just younger. So, uh, see, they see themselves in you. So that you're appealing to their selves, um, their uh, sense of uh, providing love and importance, feeling important because they're doing that, right? And on the other hand, they're providing you money and safety and knowledge, right? So this is why people connect with one another. There's this kind of lights when the, from, from uh, red to green and then you feel better and there's this um, you lower your threshold because you connect with that person on that type on that intrinsic level so this is about safety and the last one is about biological and biological is about eating is about sleeping is about sex it's about all these types of um, kind of um, visceral needs that we have that make us do things. It's like jealousy or like uh, hatred or like some.